I can promise you. That dog don't hunt. Why don't you go on and get down on your knees and tell me who you really work for? He's like, are we in the same movie? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're doing, man. <laughs> I'm not even sure what you just yeah, said. Yeah, I'm in James Bond and you in Deliverance right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into our reviews this evening. Oh, Martin, when was that? It was about, uh, what was it, two years ago? I want to say two. Two years ago. You know, y'all. This, this year we had Lego Batman, and previous year we had Deadpool, so it was Kingsman right before that. Yeah, people, y'all, you know what? Here's the thing. People said, y'all think James Bond is some shit. James Bond ain't nothing. On these Kingsmen that we got coming up here, you can look at all these sexy ass people playing dead, uh, playing uh, James Bond, like uh, what's his name, Daniel Craig. i like, he ain't sexy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I find him dreamy. <laughs> it looks like a foot to Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martin talk about them look like goddamn Dumbo to me. <laughs> but all these so sex- he's a fine actor you know yeah all this time you know i've been looking at all these people up here playing sexy ass james bond but y'all didn't, y'all didn't think that colin firth could bring it like that and with this uh and it was so successful the kingsman that they even had to bring colin firth back and now they sure. they, they can't no spoil it but whatever they ki- they killed him shot him in his head he yes. was dead AF. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, it was no coming back. But they were like, bullshit, he's the moneymaker here. We, gonna, yeah. <laughs> we gotta do witchcraft. We gotta bring this motherfucker back as a zombie. We bring him back Colin Firth and we're bringing back the franchise. So now we have the return of Colin Firth as Harry. We have Eggsy. We got Mark Strong up in here. We bringing everybody back. Not for long, but they're coming back for a small appearance. And this time, they're messing with the Golden Circle. Today marks the beginning of a new age. Wait, I'm going to show you. Say goodbye to the Kingsmen. Oh, all them cool ass, well dressed, gentlemanly Kingsmen just going up in smoke. All because of Julian Moore, who is. Poppy Anderson, I think. I don't know. Poppy somebody. Popping some shit. But, <laughs> you know, you thought it was like, because when you had the first Kingsman, they were going out there to stop a madman played by Samuel Jackson. Mm-hmm. But who would have known that a mad woman would be the one to come in and destroy the whole organization? Forcing these guys to go in and do what they thought they would never do. The thing they probably dreaded to do the most, work with Americans. Oh, country ass Americans. Now, one of the things that I can say about Kingsman, the first Kingsman, is that it was a, it was a surprise to everybody. Sure. I think a lot of people looked at the trailer and people were between, oh, it looks like it's going to suck to, oh, it looks like it'll be cool. I don't know if it's going to be great, but it looks interesting. A lot of people didn't know that they were in for the surprise that they were going to get with this. This was not just a parody of spy films. Like of, Get Smart. Like, yeah. Oh, no, I don't know. No, no fuck. No, no. no. <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right. You... <laughs> just, just, just let it. Just walked them right into it. Wow, I walked right into that trap. <laughs> cool Y'all know. Like, yeah, wait, wait, no, no. I mean, leg just stuck in that bed. Shit. Good one. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> to the nether. Yeah. <laughs> Starting gnawing my leg on. <laughs> but. Uh, with that one, it was uh, it was a, a surprisingly smart and clever spy parody satire. If you want to really get smart with it, but at the same time, it really did function as a legitimately good spy film. And parodies uh, work best that way when they're more satirical. And you go, you know what? If you take the goofiness out of it, it still is a well-made film that is trying to parody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it worked. Why did it work? Because well, for one, the action in there really was thrilling you know the action was so well done it was it was over the top with colin farrell and taron uh, Edgerton. Colin Firth. Uh, Colin's got, i knew i was gonna throw farrell in there somewhere i knew he was gonna make it a bit colin first someone's like how dare you sir yeah. <laughs> confuse me with that no. chavy can but uh will farrell and owen edgerton here yeah <laughs> <laughs> no uh uh taron edgerton yeah he uh you know those two had a great relationship in the movie yeah you actually cared about them 
there was a lot of stuff that a movie like this didn't have to do with the pretty much let's just admit it the childish action and the, even the childish plot that it had in there it didn't have to go as far as it did but it worked and as i said let me quit disrespecting colin firth because as i keep mentioning his name that was probably the ultimate surprise everybody was so used to seeing colin firth be such a proper british gentleman oh here comes mr darcy little pants ass mm -hmm. motherfucker mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you know what and he's like all right you keep talking that you keep talking that shit i'm gonna give you i'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how we give a proper ass whooping too damn knocked him ass out cold <laughs> well he was stiff as a board <laughs> He's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, no, it was it was a brilliant, brilliant combination of a lot of things. Also, if you notice in that scene right there, just that really kinetic action that they had going on, hyperkinetic, hyperkinetic mm -hmm. action where it was the the camera was pretty much weaving. It was sped up, but it was weaving in the action. A lot of people really appreciated that. Yeah, and the uh, I, I guess I don't know if you call him stunt coordinator or fight cho choreographer is a guy who works on everything. Every time you see an exciting fight scene, or especially when it's hyperkinetic, it's the same guy who's doing it. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, uh, above all, it what made it work, which is heart. This movie says, Fuck Hart. <laughs> Hart was cool when you would get to know us, but Hart didn't pay my mortgage. Yeah, yeah. I want Hart a beach was, house. Yeah, Hart was all right, but now you know we now we want to get stupid. And the, the one of the when I walked out of this, I I I, I finally said to myself, and I mean seriously, when I walked out, I said, you know what, this movie can be summed up in one way. The first Kingsman was like being on a first date with somebody who was nice but also was fun-loving, even a little bit rowdy. It's being on a first date with somebody who spent a lot of time planning out the date. Jump a, a few months later, you're actually... And you gave it up. You're, you're date, you are actually dating this person, and at this point, when they got you in, you finally realize, oh shit, this person's an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, they, they didn't show me all this. I thought they just wanted to party the first night. <laughs> yeah. They have a problem. It's you realize weird. they were fun-loving because they probably got a little drunk, and they were on their best behavior when you first met them, but now that you are fully dating them, you take them out in public, they are stupid. They are goofy. Getting into fights. They are getting into fights. They don't give a fuck. They're rude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're mid little mentally ill. You know, it's running a, out on bar tabs. <laughs> yeah, you really the Coleman effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it from me. I'm don't let this clothing fool you. I'm a true asshole. I've done all this. I know one when I see one. <laughs> My wife is waking up to this right now. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. whatever. What, what, whatever manners or gentlemanly uh, 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 disposition that first movie had, no, nah, this movie has turned full fuck, uh, fucking soccer hooligan here. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, like, it's, it's not attempting to be even as clever. Not even close to as clever as that first one was. No. Not at all. No, it, the, the only time it comes close is when it's just stealing something from the first movie. Yes, yeah. and there's yeah. a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, where I talked about that first one was a, was a parody, but, but also it was a legit spy film. This is just a parody, and a parody of itself. Yeah, it's a parody of the first <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> they did it. How do you parody a parody of yourself? Sadly, this happens, <laughs> this happens all too often. It, I, I, I see it way too much, uh, this kind of sequelitis where mm -hmm. a movie comes out and you don't expect it to be good. And somehow it was. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that was awesome. They, they, they defied my expectations. They, it was mm -hmm. better than the trailer. And then they go like, well, now we're making another one. And that second movie is everything you were afraid the first movie was going to be. Yeah, yeah. It, they, they, we're at the point now where the studio said... You goddamn right you better make another one. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you Matthew Vaughn who's the director probably was ready to move on to something else and they're like, "Hell no, you put yourself in. You made this too good. We like, made too much money." You think that? And I'd love to believe that because this feels like a movie that was directed by somebody who, other than the original director. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently from everything I've been hearing, Matthew Vaughn was totally on board with this and has a 4-hour cut of this movie. Yeah, I heard that too. Ooh, At one shit. point it was going to be two movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they said, I heard, like, I heard that that it was going to be two movies, but I thought they were talking about just splitting this one in too, because this is two and a half hours, right? Yeah. Unnecessarily, yeah. and yeah. you and and the, and what's one what, one of the main problems with this is that the first one was just as I said, kind of rowdy, mm -hmm. and, and you know was having it was like taking a James Bond movie and just rubbing a little dirt on it and having a little sure. fun. Lo yeah. Loosen up, old man. Mm -hmm. This one right here, this is 
it was proper London versus the the East End. There you go, brought together. Mm-hmm. This here, this is uh, this is like a rated R Spy Kids. This is, <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, dude, you nailed it. Yeah. No, no, because what I mean by that, because if you if you look Even at Spy Kids has heart, <laughs> like, it's, it's trying to be like, yeah, we're trying to say something, even though it look like crap. Like this one had the the bright colors, like the the CG that was overly obvious man and purposely that way uh, and it also had like the the villains that were amusement park attractions yeah, you yeah. know because uh, you know they were they were cartoons themselves i mean think they were like almost like a uh, a a villainous willy wonka in a way you know with all these bright colors that they have because in this we got as i said we have poppy adams not anderson poppy adams poppy adams they don't really explain why because they're not they don't have a reason why they just said man we want we just want to put her in a really colorful uh, 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 exaggerated environment. So this woman lives in a fifties diner where she has a cartoonish robotic maid, two robot dogs, almost something like out the Jetsons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and wasn't it in a jungle in Colombia? And, and, yeah. and yeah, and Cambodia. And, and, Cambodia. It's, with, and, and it's within uh, 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 like a uh, what do you call it? like a, uh, a temple? A temple. Cambodia, yeah. Yeah. And her whole play, whole takeover for the world. Her her takeover plan is to have drugs be. Uh, uh, sent out to everyone that ha- that are that are uh, poisoned with this disease that have people dance so hard that they run out of breath, and for some reason their eyeballs explode. This is the yeah, people. This there's no reason for any of this other than hey, it's funny. You know, by the way, she also has kidnapped Elton John because well they. Just happened to get Elton John, you know. Yeah. Like, oh boy, did they! You know that that what you just said because well dot dot dot. That's what it is with a, so much of this movie, mm-hmm. like the way they tattoo everybody with actual gold in a circle. You know, why? Why? You because, know? Because well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're right. Cool. You know, and they, I mean, it, and you know, the it's if you notice what when you were listening to that clip, it's another uh, it's another movie where the '80s. Is cool. It's it's make you know it's it's uh, something that's very retro right now. The director grew up in the '80s, so he has nostalgia for it. And they have all these scenes where they force force the '80s soundtrack into it. Oh, and you want to talk about why? No, from the very beginning, they let you know. Look, man, y'all don't get it. Just have fun. When you say it's a cartoon, it really is. Because why is it a cartoon? Because we don't want you coming back asking why. Because that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> why? Why did you? Why did this? Why, why, why'd you do that? It's, hey, it's a cartoon. So when you ask why Poppy Adams is hiding in a temple in the middle of the jungle with robots, yet somehow she has managed to hide bombs and drones uh-huh. <laughs> in every major and, city, in every major city around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask that. It's it's a cartoon. <laughs> Let the cartoons begin. <laughs> you know they, they don't they don't explain. It. But if you notice, like the CG right there, that's very Spy Kids. Yeah. yeah. Despite having, she has drones everywhere, all over the world. She had maybe like twelve guards. At yeah, her high yeah, down. yeah. Well, she spent all her money on drones, yeah. man. <laughs> robot dog. Like, yeah. yeah. There's a chick that's hiding out, yet somehow she built Amazon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like her technology is better than what Amazon has. Now. Hey, hey, hey! It's a cartoon. Settle down. And I give her credit for diversifying her uh, her business because she's like, yo, I'll push weed, I'll push heroin. I'll push- <laughs> like, how are you doing this? <laughs> I, no, I love I love that. And Julian Moore is it, she's having a good time with the role. Again, people having fun, but it's just kind of like, all right, she has just one personality. You know, yeah. she's like this. Again, they're not explaining. She's like this fifties uh, uh, fashion villain. You know, everything she says is so sweet and innocent, like a like like a fifties mom. But she does some of the most grotesque murderous things you see the 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 the, uh, the, the conflict there you see the, the 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 irony and it's like okay that'd be cool but if there was just something other than let's just do it well yeah. also it at two and a half hours and with all the characters they pack in here uh, she disappears off the screen for a long oh, time yes, so by the time she comes back i was like oh yeah i forgot you were part oh, of this oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah she is in this yeah no it was a long time that she's gone in this and you know speaking of if we want to talk about characters uh that is the other place that they really i mean look i don't know it depends it depends on how you walk into the movie if you walk into this movie just looking for something way goofier and you're prepared for something way goofier than you got in in, in kingsman that's cool but I think that the cartoon theme is pushed way too much because what they've done here 
is that when we say that it's uh it's not only a rated R spy kids, if you want to push that cartoon theme, that kids theme a little further, it's also an eighties Saturday morning cartoon. The the the, the ones where they were 30, 30 minute commercials for action figures yep. like G.I. Joe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because these characters in this movie, they are G.I. Joe characters. <laughs> you know, you know how G.I. Joe was it, it was such a special forces that you could just dress any which way you want to. Sure. You, you know. No, no, they were, they were like the, the village people. Yeah, they were like the village people. They encourage you to go to the Halloween store and get yeah. your costume there. <laughs> Military issue? No, man. It's like wrestlers, like, no, nah, man, you gotta have a gimmick, you're gonna join yeah, G.I. Yeah. Joe. Go to the Halloween bazaar. Don't no, don't come to us with that shit. You got a dude over here dressed up with a with a with like a like a he he's in the army, he's got a navy suit on. Yeah. Right. You know, one dude got his football and jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yo, how did you get in with that? Yeah. One dude ain't even got to wear a shirt. No. He just got on a tank top on the right. Yeah. <laughs> got his USA tank top yeah. on right there. And yeah. Stormtrooper yeah. mask. Yeah. 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 One guy's wearing a tea kettle. Yeah. yeah. One dude dressed like Mr. T down here. You know, they get to do whatever they want. And the characters in this movie. It's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> Man, these characters in this movie, they are action figures. They are defined by the way they dressed and what accessory they have. Like, they're literally these people. Like, if you want a bird, take a bird. <laughs> you got a bird, but got on leopard print. It's yeah. like, yo, well, these things don't even match. <laughs> One dude, see, this is, this is what I love right here. That dude with like, the giant scorpion. No, the dude, man, you're looking at everything because all this, this, other, all this other stuff kind of makes sense. Like, maybe this dude's bird is well-trained to kill. That dude has a robotic scorpion. You missed the dude that brought, like, tools. He brought, like, uh, street cones and a, and a garden rake. <laughs> I just don't say you a rake. <laughs> like he didn't have nothing, man. Well, well he was the last one. It's like well, he's the only props we got left. <laughs> yeah. Like his mama had no money for him. Oh, yeah. oh, What's your yeah. name? Tool shed, I guess. I don't know. Like <laughs> tool shed. Like I remember when. We <laughs> Lay the rake down like a landmine. <laughs> this reminded me, like when I was a kid, we we all had we when, when I was a kid, we all had like, like that one friend. Like all of us had a cool ass costume that our that our parents spent money on. It was uh, one, that one poor kid yo. who got dressed up in a trash bag. Or something. I'm a <laughs> no, you would have to trash bag, man. That's that dude down there with that rake, and he brought street cones. Street what you gonna cones. do with that shit? Up? I'm, well, I'm gonna lay it here, and then Cobra yeah. will know not to go past yeah. these cones. I'm establishing a perimeter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is fucking stupid. But that's what these characters are in the movie. I mean, they have they they have accessories. This is they are action figures. You know, they have things like bionic arms and they have uh you know they have special guns. And I will tell you this much. I will say that when you when you look at this, it it, it was kind of a cool initial concept because it's like watching action figures. Because you know, since they were cartoons and they were for kids, they had all them big ass weapons that can never kill anybody with them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like if there's one cool thing. It's kind of like watching action figures of G.I. Joe characters who actually get to kill people with their cool ass weapons like this guy who has an electrified lasso uh -huh. <laughs> you know cause he's get it cause he's a he's a killer cowboy <laughs> you know this is uh, to be fair to that one though even in the first one he had that umbrella that used like he used as a shield and he could see through it, it had like a video screen on it yeah so like there's a little bit of that but here they just it, it's more ridiculous than it yeah goes. yeah you know again this is just because, yeah. because it will look cool. Mm -hmm. but like, what's the effectiveness of a lasso? Like, I'm, okay, yeah. my umbrella shoots bullets, and you got a lasso. I'm yeah. gonna shoot you before and you get anywhere near as, like, me. A riot shield too. Yeah. Well, shit, when your shit's electrified, you can cut a motherfucking half. Know. You know, I mean, it's a pretty <laughs> badass weapon. Uh, just even a, a whip or a lasso on its own. More yeah. A whip more than anything. Not yeah. a lasso. Never yeah. mind. That's dumb. I like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, why are you defending this? Yeah. Never mind. What am I saying? You know, because Indiana Jones is looking at things like, man, I don't need no electricity on my shit. <laughs> I whoop ass every. Day. <laughs> Watch him lynch somebody yeah. last night. You gotta, you gotta take your whip and plug it in and recharge this shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm out there battery free whipping ass. <laughs> you know. uses the new charger. Yeah. Uh. yeah, you got a USB whip. <laughs> <laughs> some, some old school shit is just uh, more functional. But the when, when you know, like I said, that's kind of fun from a visual standpoint. And you're right. In the first one. Like uh, they had the umbrellas and everything, and even when we get the James Bond movies, you know Q and the headquarters, you know they they give they, they give him kind of outlandish sure weapons yeah. too. It, it comes with the territory. Yeah, I can take things from a visual standpoint if you kind of make the characters fun that use them, if you make the story a little more engaging. But man, some of these characters that they have, they are they they are about as plastic as action figures. They it is just painful. 
Well, even their code names are all alcohols. Yeah, Mar- tequila and te- whiskey. Mar- and it don't even make any sense. Like no. that cowboy's one guy's like, I'm margarita. I'm like, you ain't Mexican, man. <laughs> you yeah. know, you, that's you, racist. That's kind of a pro- <laughs> that's appropriation of a code name. <laughs> you know, and I, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. sure how that. <laughs> and then, I got it. I mean, I rolled with it because it fit with the theme because everybody in Kingsman had King Arthur name. Right, right. So I was like, all right, if we're going to go over here and their headquarters is like a brewery, I, I, it makes sense to have yeah. alcohol names. And that's where they are they have to meet the statesman and the statesman's undercover thing you know like over there they got mi6 and then these and if they don't if you want to get deeper these guys they're all you know they got cool things they're all tailors you know they all have dignified jobs here we just drink whiskey and that's what we hide under we yeah, have just a bunch of rednecks and drunks I yeah. barely and, and, and even within their territory i was like wait some of them are spies but some of them are just redneck assholes <laughs> yeah drink there all the time yeah that's right yeah. and he said like a code name i was like, so is he part of y'all crew is he just some yeah. guy that's here yeah. yeah it's just a bunch of redneck country motherfuckers who they they say that our, our base is in the distillery no y'all just drinking man this shit is just a, a over glorified yeah. bar it is like a a, a, a a british kids view of america yes you know in, <laughs> yeah in the south we all wear cowboy hats we all have lassos we all spit tobacco which which by the way is a weapon in this movie <laughs> like yeah. like uh, uh chatting tatum uh is is he's uh he's he's surgical with that shit and uh and they come out and they say things like yeah that dog don't hunt with really thick accents you know my mama she always told me <laughs> us southerners get our good manners from the british he actually goes between southern and black you know what <laughs> were they feeding him one line at a time just yeah. <laughs> you know my mama line. always told me uh, line. <laughs> I, miss the, I, I miss the channing tatum who couldn't act yeah me too it's been a while just dance just dance i can promise you that dog don't hunt why don't you go on and get down on your knees and tell me who you really work for He's like, are we in the same movie? Yeah. <laughs> I signed up for yeah, this. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing, man. I'm not even sure what you just yeah. said. I'm in James Bond and you in Deliverance right now. <laughs> it's weird, though, because as different as they are and goofy as they are, functionally, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Like, their tech is the exact same. So mm-hmm. how, how are you not aware that this is a thing? Because you guys are doing the exact same yeah, thing. Like, yeah. like, how did you hack in here? I'm like, I think we have the same stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. recognize that we squad, man. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> like, bitch, you left the bottle. <laughs> you the one told us yeah. it came with instructions <laughs> I will say that that hyperkinetic action that we were talking about is there and it has its moments and the movie opens up great man the movie actually has this chase scene and they and people were plotting because they, they're playing let's go crazy from Prince and the whole thing is well choreographed to that and it's fun and it's, and it's it, 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 at that moment it is capturing what the first Kingsman caught, that nice middle ground of being outlandish, but also sure. somewhat I mean, well-grounded. It's, it's not the church scene, but it's it's that kind of, it, it gives you that feeling like, all right, I remember where I was, you know, where, where I left off, mm. and we get more of this, and this is going to be a fun ride. This is just the beginning. Oh, you just wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and people were- Keep waiting. You know, <laughs> no, 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 really, 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 we can do something. No, no, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Bro, it's been two hours yeah, going yeah, on. <laughs> you know, there are moments of great characterization in this, but very little. I, I I I enjoy watching Taron Edgerton and Mark Strong together. They brought what was missing with with uh, uh, Colin Firth, who is not in the movie for a large majority of sure. it. Sure. Mm-hmm. We keep talking about Colin Firth. I'm gonna tell you something. Colin Firth was probably one of the laziest elements of this movie. Oh my God, Harry. They didn't even try to give a good reason to bring him back. That fool was <laughs> dead. Yup. <laughs> Yeah. It was it, it shot in the head. It's, shot it's, in the it's, head. It's funny how you see this. You go like, man, this better not be a twin brother. And then by the time it's done, it's like, you know, a twin brother wouldn't have been that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that man. would. When you go the twin brother route, one of the worst, worst reasons to bring back somebody from the dead in a movie that would have made more sense than what they mm-hmm. did here. Oh. When they, when you, <laughs> he's a clone. Okay, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with it. Like that. I take any of that. It, it, he's even wearing a, 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 a an eye patch. I take his evil twin. <laughs> you know, and they had to like go in and and reprogram him. You know, mm-hmm. something. He worked for another organization. Uh, but 
with this, they didn't even try. They didn't even try to give you a good reason. They pretty much told you, hey, look, accept it. I don't. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, but it's like he's back, but he's not that same character for no. the most part. Yeah. So then okay, we don't need him back then. And the badass person that he was in the first movie, not here. Nope. No, so don't expect. All. They even have a scene where they, they you, you want to talk about the laziness that comes with this character. It's not exactly just how they brought him back either. It's, they try to go in and recreate scenes. I know. They, re, they try to recreate that bar scene from the first movie and that shit just came out of nowhere. Uh -huh. Hey, you British faggot. You know, I was like, wow, man. What year is it? <laughs> Y'all really don't like America. Is, man. <laughs> that was the one line that cracked us up because it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do I look? Like, and it, yeah. This dude just comes in like, who are you? Like, yeah, they had, they had chilled a out, chill out Bacardi. Yeah. 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 Daddy, what y'all? <laughs> Whose man is this? That is true. We yeah. couldn't even figure it out. Like, yeah. all these people got code names and one dude named Bacardi gets up and just like, hey, you faggot. And we can't figure out if he was just a dude at the bar. What well, did he work for them? Yeah. 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 There was a reason for that scene from the first movie. You know, the, and, and that's there's none here except, except that hey people really like that scene oh we got a, a, a kind of a good gag to go with it yeah everybody you know this I, I really hate to say this because i was looking forward to this movie i really was yeah you know there was a and, and oh and just to go a little bit further uh some of you now i'm not i'm kind of 50 50 on how i feel about this but this, the movie can probably be seen as somewhat sexist too uh, this, oh, you think so? Man, it, just look, a little bit. <laughs> just a smidge. Let me, let me tell you something. For a movie this stupid, for a movie that has almost childlike innocence in its stupidity because of all the characters that are action figures, the spy kids element to it, for a movie that, this, that is this goofy, you don't try to get intel from somebody by invading their vagina. <laughs> I don't care how you do it. I don't care what your I don't care what your intentions were at first. And I mean it's you know I'm thinking about how women's issues are a big deal too. You stay away from that vagina and things well, like this. And that's the thing, man. The first movie it could be crude, but it was very depth uh, adept at handling that. It it knew how to how to how to negotiate it in such a way where you got a good enough laugh from it. And you knew there was a brain behind it. Mm -hmm. And here, they go, it's just almost somebody going like, hey, we got we to gotta up the crude factor. Remember, that's what everybody liked. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well how, well, how about we do this? And nobody was there to go like, eh. They're like, hey, go for it. Uh, everybody that you see here that they're saying, hey, look at all these people we have in here. Holly Berry. Holly Berry don't do shit in here. No. Holly, you know what Holly Berry does? She wears glasses. Yeah. Type on the keyboard. That's her character. Jeff Bridges, he just getting a check. He sits down at the table and says, rah, rah, and that's it. <laughs> but your boy, the one that does the least in here, that they, they were promoing in the trailer something vicious, Channing Tatum. Oh, yeah. They make it look Ooh. like it's, it's half his movie. Yeah. yeah. Like the way they had him featured in the trailers and everything, y'all, yeah. he is not in this at no. all. They put that big hunk of bologna in the fridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they yes. left him there for an hour that's, and a half. That's true. They put him on ice. Which, yeah. Which is so weird, the whole way they swap him out for Pedro Pascal. Mm. I mean, it really was a swap out. And yeah. I was like, why was there a need for two characters? I mean, yeah. for, for this whole arc, it could have been just one guy for yeah. this. You see, they, they yeah. just need to pick one or the other. You want you want to know what he's there for? He's he is there just for the female audience. He's there to get in his underwear and dance along with everybody else. He gets his disease and he's out. <laughs> they put it. They they put his ass on ice. Yes, <laughs> he checks out literally. the rest of the movie. <laughs> they put his ass in an ice chest <laughs> and sat on that shit. Hey, you don't see him for like an hour. Mm -hmm. it, oh no! Every now you see him lying on his back in a bunch of ice with his eyes closed, but that's it. Yeah, taking a nap. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, people. But the camera lingering on his dick the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's worth your money, then go ahead, go right ahead. Like, hey, hey. there's a magic Jesus. mic shot. I mean, I mean, I can deal with that, but you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's me. Yeah, this is just the movie that the, the desire was there to make it, but not the inspiration for it. So, yeah, this is a this is a rental. There are moments of fun in here. Oh, and, but even it's repetitive, the moments you, of fun that you have in here. That scene I was talking about at the beginning with the chase, where they're playing Let's Go Crazy, and it's so well choreographed, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, that's that's cool, and I had a great time watching that, but they repeat that about three more times in the movie. They They have all this crazy action. They they play a, uh, an 80s song, and the camera's just weaving in and out. After a while, it it, it becomes a novelty and kind of loses its effect. Uh, yeah, it's a rental. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
the best thing the way to describe this film is just bloated what i like your analogy of the date but i think for me this is like with the first one it was like getting a big mac meal at mcdonald's and with a shake on the side and you good this one is like getting a big mac meal everything on the dollar menu getting all the sauces they have and just pouring them in your <laughs> mouth and just losing your mind yeah there's so much shit in here dude it's out of control so yeah it's a rental for me same as you yeah at, you know at, at two hours it's a rental but it's two and a half hours it doesn't quite make it some old bullshit, but man, it makes it a low rental. Okay. It just right. no, it, even you. even even at low enjoyment, it just it wears you down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the smartest movies this year is an hour and a half. Yeah. This dumb shit, like they like they had something to say. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of nerve making a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. That's a, like this. This movie is an eight year old with his dick out, just ah, for two and a half hours. You know, ah. it's, it's, it's one of these things where everybody goes like, man, these Marvel movies are just formula. It's like. Yeah, but they know what they're doing. Yeah. They know they know how to make a movie that that works for two yeah. plus hours. This movie's leading nowhere. Ain't no, there's no there's no story projector that's going on. I like the last twenty minutes of this. You could feel the energy just drain out of the theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. go home, man. End. God damn it, just end. Yeah. Um, what about you? I- I don't think this is a terrible movie, but it does have the misfortune of being very similar to a much better movie that came out just two or three years ago. Um, the best parts of it are the parts that feel like they were rehashed from the first one, and none of those are done as well as they were in the first one. Uh, it's like they took all the charm and the heart out of the first one and just replaced it with bombast and bad scenes with Elton John. Uh, and for me, the worst part of it, though, is the decision to bring back Colin Firth because that undercuts the first one. Mm-hmm. And that, that alone... It makes me not really care for this. It's at like all. everything you feared that, that <laughs> yeah. would happen when they brought Colin Firth back. They they actually exceeded. Yeah, yeah. They like if you saw this after you saw the first one, it actually makes the first one a little bit worse. Um, but again, I don't think it's terrible. So for me, it's a rental. There's some nice fight choreography here, mm-hmm. and a few of the jokes were pretty funny, especially some of the scenes with Julianne Moore. But outside of that, yeah, there's no reason to see this. Yeah, next time you want to get this stupid, just make a make a movie about this crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to see Street Man. <laughs> uh, I, I think they've done those. <laughs> yeah. and they were plenty stupid. No, man, I, I watched GI Joe every goddamn day after school. I never saw Street Man. <laughs> The bio has a symbol on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what do you do? We need a reboot so we can see Cone Man out there. Oh, it'd be great if they made the next G.I. Joe movie with all the reject G.I. Joes. Oh, G.I. I know. <laughs> One dude driving up in a trash truck. 